previously on Hashtag Actors Life. All if, artists if, in the if, business. If much. you work in front of a camera or behind a microphone, you are covered by sag After. So what's this about? He goes, well, we just had a, a hearing today. And I got, I won't say the name, this, this person who hosted a show for a number of years over $100,000 in back pay. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so we take care of, we make sure that people get paid on time, we make sure that they get paid appropriately. Their website is actorsfund.org, mm -hmm. uh, but they can get, they can, they'll pay your rent, they'll pay your, your utilities, they'll, right. right. Yeah, and they have counseling services, like if you are going through a really bad time and you need to have yeah. somebody to talk to, yeah. they help you through that. A lot of people go in to come into the business expecting to make the money that was made, say, 20 years ago, say, on a commercial. Right. And um, it's not impossible, mm -hmm. but it's not as likely as it once was. Yeah. And know. that's the thing, like, I, some of my friends <laughs> and I would joke about, I just need to book one national <laughs> commercial. I just need one. That's it. And I'm, I'm set for the year. I'm right. good. <laughs> One national that runs Class A, because that makes a difference. It's got to run Class A. You know? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was fortunate when I was doing commercials. I used to do a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Oh, okay. yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but they because there's so many ways to air it now and mm -hmm. get the same volume of eyes mm -hmm. without spending as much money, that's what the producers are doing. Oh, wow. You know, because when they, they show a ads on... Uh, YouTube and Vimeo mm -hmm. and whomever else, that's where they don't have to pay much for it, mm -hmm. and uh, they're still getting the same eyes. Wow. Yeah. 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 So that so, way it, it yeah. cuts down the, yeah. the pay rate, yeah. right? Yeah. So oh, there's wow. not a whole lot we can do about that in, in, in the way that it's set up, but we are looking at ways to re-engineer our contracts because mm -hmm. the contracts are... Um, the, all of the television and uh, film contracts mm -hmm. are based on um, the early years when we only had three networks. And we're shifting them, mm -hmm. but um, things are moving so quickly now, it's, <laughs> you know, yeah. we do have new media contracts and we really are uh, grabbing those as well, mm -hmm. like as fast as we can, like Netflix and Amazon Prime, etc. They're not, the AMPTP, and I don't remember now off the top of my head exactly what it stands for, but those are the big producers with the studios that we negotiate with. We negotiate our contracts with them, and but Netflix is not part of it, neither is Amazon. With them, we promulgate the contract. We tell them how much they're gonna have to pay us to do their shows. So, oh, wow. that okay. makes life a lot better. Right. Now, we try to be fair, but mm -hmm. we also, we try to be fair to ourselves as well as to them so that they will want to continue to work, to work with us. Yeah. But yeah, so. Okay, so technically they're not like really a part of the union? No, no, no. Well, they're not, they're not part of the, it's not about them part being part of the union. It's mm -hmm. about they are willing to do, to work with us. That's all mm -hmm. we need is somebody who's going to work with us. Okay. They're the producers. The producers right. are not part of the union. They're the, yeah. on the other side of the table, but they're not part of the, the produce the group the producing studios mm -hmm. that we negotiate the big contracts with. Okay. You know. So okay. yeah. Well, well one great thing though, I think w this is just my personal opinion. I think the great thing about Netflix and Amazon mm -hmm. Prime, they have uh, created a competition, so to speak, with the yeah. big networks. Yes. Like, you know, now all of the big networks are just pumping out mm -hmm. content and they're mm -hmm. looking for new content, mm -hmm. which is great for us because it keeps yes. us working. Absolutely. <laughs> so, like, I mean, I, I guess you could say that's one good thing about it. It's, it's, no, it's a great thing. And mm -hmm. they're, they're pushing the envelope and they're creating better better product thing, right. because they, everybody is now vying for the, quote, limited number of eyes. Yeah. You know, now the other thing that, that we do know is that pretty much everything mm -hmm. ends up overseas or someplace else besides America, we get residuals on those too. Oh, well, I, I mean, back up. On some of those things we get residuals on because other countries have different structures. There are other kinds of pay royalties we, we get on some of them, but mm -hmm. the royalties are not necessarily as, as what good as residuals, but mm -hmm. it depends on the country and, and uh, the value of the project, but yeah. Okay. Well, what's the difference between royals and residuals? 
Oh, that's a long conversation right now, but mm -hmm. it's it's not. Um, I need to ask my lawyer. But yeah, it's. I mean, residuals I know are based on basically um, how well the commercial the project does mm -hmm. and what the what percentage of the fee is due the union, mm -hmm. and then whatever percentage that is is divided among the actors in the project. Royalties are a whole other thing because some countries don't have a residual structure. Mm -hmm. We have negotiated with them um, what percentage they're going to pay us, and it's not it's not an automatic thing. We've negotiated mm -hmm. each with each country mm -hmm. what percentage they're going to pay us for using our projects or those mm -hmm. projects, and so it's not based on the eyes or whatever the residuals are based on. It's a whole other different kind of structure yeah okay so yeah. let me ask you this like mm -hmm. just hypothetically let's say for whatever reason sag after had to close its doors what would that mean for the acting community oh wow i can't imagine that it ever will to begin with we are one of the strongest unions in the world okay. um, <laughs> i know I, <laughs> I was surprised when i really found out how strong we really are mm -hmm. what it would mean is and i do know that that right now there is a, an anti-union um, energy mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. We are at the lowest rate percentage of uh, unionization since unions came into being. Wow. Um, the middle class was created by unions. Right. right. The weekend, um, the overtime, the five-day right. work week, mm -hmm. the eight-hour work day. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we have in our in our uh, pay scales, we get eight-hour days mm -hmm. and plus overtime and uh, right. uh, time and a half, and then mm -hmm. um, double time, mm -hmm. uh, and then golden time. What's golden time. Golden time? <laughs> I, I did one job once, and I got golden time. Mm -hmm. Golden time is when you work so long that because uh, it's like X number of hours. With, of double t of over of time and uh, yeah overtime and then x number of hours of double time and then um, a time and a half and then double time and then golden time is when you get paid a whole day's pay for each additional hour worked. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah! 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 Wow! That that was kind of a magical day for me. I know it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, I don't remember how long ago it was now, though, but it was a Tide commercial. It was the very first time they'd ever done a black family scenario of, uh, of, uh, with that product. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know until that day, and you all will know this now, okay. whenever they have, like, they, you know, on those commercials, they show you just how white or what clean a, a, a shirt is after using Tide, mm -hmm. they actually have to use the the shirt. Mm -hmm. They start in the morning with a shirt on the hero, whoever the hero is. They have two, mm -hmm. and they go through the whole day. See, most projects are shot out of sequence. Right. These are shot in sequence. Oh wow! And so by the end of the spot, when they show you the that how good Tide is because it cleaned the ketchup off or the wine or the whatever, mm -hmm. it's because they had to actually stop the shoot to wash the shirt. To make sure that that's the shirt that they showed on, to right. The product. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, right. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind getting another one of those. I, was, I wouldn't <laughs> mind either. <laughs> wow. Now, like before, I was a, a union member. Mm -hmm. Like I used to be a kind of afraid, like to go to the office and ask oh, questions. I don't know. I guess I was afraid because I wasn't a member. They they was gonna kick me out oh. or something. Like, nah, you're not a member. Get out. No, <laughs> no. But it is, it's a available resource we, for... Everybody. everybody. We are uh, what we like to call people who are not yet members, mm -hmm. pre-members. We'd like to think that even though you haven't joined, mm -hmm. that you're going to. Because if you're going to continue in this business and you want to call yourself a professional, you can't do uh, movies without being in the union. Right. You can't do... Uh, if I would s could say legitimate television without being in the union, you right. just can't. Mm -hmm. um, right now, th we we are having an issue with commercials. Now, from 2000, I was going to say this earlier. In 2000, when we had the strike and all that other stuff happened, mm -hmm. when we started to get commercials back, um, 
and then we lost, we had lost our agency agreement. Mm -hmm. um, SAG and AFTRA, SAG, AFTRA had the agency agreement, SAG didn't. We were fighting over television, not commercials, but television. Mm -hmm. And the agents were very quietly making more money by doing non-union work. Once we merged, we were able to actually get a handle on how much non-union work they're doing. So at this point, what we're doing is we're, we're embarking on a, um, a couple of different endeavors to get people who are uh, production companies and producers who are doing non-union work to mm -hmm. actually come home. You right. know, some, of them, uh, some of them have never done uh, union work. Uh, mm -hmm. Others have done union work and are trying to slip away. We're going, no, that's not a good idea. Okay. And they entice non-members and members mm -hmm. by paying them uh, exorbitant amounts of money. Mm -hmm. But what most people don't understand or realize or think about is there's no residual component. Right, right. There is no uh, contribution to your pension fund. There's no contribution to your health fund, and there is always a possibility of there being a conflict. If it's a commercial, right, and you've done a commercial for a uh, soft drink, mm -hmm. if the contract that you sign is in perpetuity, mm -hmm. you can never do another con a soft drink commercial in life, right? Wow. SAG after's contracts are for 21 months. Mm -hmm. After that, they have to come back to you and say, "We want to use you." And you have the right to say, how much you going to pay me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds like a much better deal to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So, like, for um, for non-union actors mm -hmm. or, or pre-members, mm -hmm. as you would say, mm -hmm. uh, out there um, they're looking for, like, representation, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of advice do you have? Oh, like for that's them. a really rough one. Uh, things have changed so much since I first got to New York. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've noticed is people are, agents are wanting to people to come to them with recommendations. Right. Because yeah. because we are being flooded by people, ev you know, who just want to join. Right. And they need, they want to have representation. And uh, some of them are prepared and some of them are not. Um, oh. If they've got a good resume, mm -hmm. like if they've got um, on their resume, mm -hmm. the training. Like when I first came to New York, the idea of having a master's degree was laughable. Right. And now, if you have a master's degree, that helps you get in the door because it means that you've taken you it take, seriously. Yeah, you have training. No guarantee mm -hmm. because it's a lot about what you bring to the table. And I can tell you from my own experience that it really is a lot about how you feel about yourself and how you present yourself because it's like when I first came to New York mm -hmm. and I struggled because I so desperately wanted to bring to them what they wanted. Right. And after about a year of virtually starving to death, you'd never know it now, <laughs> but um, I ended up going back to D.C. where I had been uh, living, mm -hmm. working on a children's series that I was supposed to be acting in, but I ended up being a writer and producer on it. Mm -hmm. And while doing that, I also did uh, casting. And when I was casting, it was a small market, so Every single time anybody came in the door, my prayer mm -hmm. was that they could bring to me either what I had in mind when I wrote it mm -hmm. or something that could work mm -hmm. in that way. And in those moments, I realized that I, as an actor, had way more power than I thought I did. You get to control and decide what it is you're going to bring. Mm -hmm. You read the script, make the decision about what you think the script is, mm -hmm. and then you come in there with the best you, best interpretation of that character that you can. Right. And because a lot of times, while there is an idea, mm -hmm. they may be fairly clear about what they want. Right. But right. if you come in bringing the best you you got, mm -hmm. you can change their minds. Right. I had one job on again a while ago. Mm -hmm. They wanted somebody who was a good 30 years older than me. Wow. And I went in, I went to the audition, I was like, I have no business being in here. Right. <laughs> but I went inside anyway, mm -hmm. and they rewrote the script. Wow. Yeah, so, you know. Wow. But a lot of it has to do with confidence, not cockiness, mm -hmm. but clarity of intent and purpose and um, 
real clear knowledge of you. You got to know who you are. Right. Yeah. Right. I had a, an acting teacher that tell us that all the time. She would always say, "Who are you?" Yeah. Like, yeah. who are you really? Yeah. Like, besides, like, your name should be Shamaria. Right. Like, like, who are you? And that is a constant question you should always be asking as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, I had a friend. I had a manager for a brief while. We were really more friends than manager cl uh, client. Mm -hmm. uh, but another friend of mine went to her to, s to get representation. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, she said, so how old do you see yourself playing? He said, uh, somewhere around, you know, 27, 28, maybe 30. The man was 52 and looked every bit of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> He played. He played young for a long time. He just never let it go. Wow. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. That comes along with <laughs> accepting yourself. Like, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, I'm know older who you now. Are. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> right. Are. Right. Uh, what well, What question I had to was uh, franchised agents mm -hmm. as opposed to you know agents who aren't franchised. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the the difference? Well, and that is we're having a little bit of a fight now. We have franchise agents, and then we have. Uh, after franchise agents, and mm -hmm. then we have those who are non-franchised. Franchise agents are the ones who have agreed to work by the rules and regulations that are set by the union. Mm -hmm. The after franchise agents are the ones who actually signed the agreement that we didn't sign, SAG didn't sign, mm -hmm. back in 2003, 4, whatever it was. And then non-franchised do not have a, an agreement with us at all, which is one of the reasons that non-union work is proliferating. Because previously, they were not, f all the agents that were really working were franchised. And right. part of their agreement was not to do non-union work. They could work with non-union actors, mm -hmm. but the projects that they worked on were not non-union. Well, they don't have a franchise now, so they don't have the obligation. Wow. So they, you know, there I have a, a couple of agents, I won't call their names, but they are, I love them. I mm -hmm. worked with them forever. And for many years, we have what's called a, a general services agreement that the agents come up with. And then if you end up with a general services agreement because you're working with an agent who do, is not uh, franchised with us, mm -hmm. and you're not, you're not sure what it is, or you think you know, but you're not clear, that's another service. You can bring it to the office, and the agency, agree, uh, the agency department, uh, actually professional representatives, we've changed it to, Mm -hmm. uh, or the lawyer, one of the lawyers we have, can look at it, go over it with you, and tell you what it is, and, and make suggestions in terms of what you should strike out, what you can, what you should sign. I mean, it's up to you, but mm -hmm. they can give you guidance. That's another wow. thing that we do. So you guys have legal guidance as well. Absolutely. We can come in and when it comes to those kinds of things, we mm -hmm. don't do just general legal things mm -hmm. um, that you might have in your life. But, right. Yeah. But things that have to do with uh, your work, like with the GSAs, is a is a good is a good. Uh, a good one to, to actually seek out help on. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I have a question too. Like, what words of encouragement do you have for not just beginning actors, mm -hmm. but actors who are actively, you know, who are working actors, but like are just a bit discouraged at the moment? You know what? I would, I always suggest to people to always train. Mm -hmm. I have not myself done it in a long time, but and I will give the excuse that I haven't had the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also am not really aggressively pursuing my career. Mm -hmm. But when you are struggling and you haven't, you're not quite doing what you think you need to do. Find a good class. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who can help guide you, help shape you. Because if you are, if it, the struggle is that hard, then there's something that you're missing and you're not aware of it. Right. You know. Um, always be positive about mm -hmm. you and the situation. One of the things that I always say, mm -hmm. there have been many jobs that I have never gotten, mm -hmm. but I've also never been rejected. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about the job. It is never a rejection of you. It is simply, mm -hmm. uh, it's part of doing business. Right. And for a long time, before I was really clear about it, it was like, well, they... They didn't choose me. That's their bad luck. Right. You know, they got bad taste or whatever. But then other times when you, when you, if you didn't get the job and you happen to see the project and you see the person who got it, mm -hmm. you can pretty much see clearly why you didn't Did get you, it. Yeah, right. And sometimes you're really happy you didn't. Right. You know. Right. Because, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Major project. I got really close to booking. 
and like when it aired, like my brother was like, uh, "Be pr like, be glad you didn't get that yeah, project." Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the other part of it, I will say, if if it's a major project, mm -hmm. when you're going in, for the most part, at this, you've been a member since October. Yeah. If it's something for like one of the networks or something, mm -hmm. um, you are meeting the cast and director. Mm -hmm. They are putting you in their file. They want to see what you're like. They're going to be bringing you back. Mm -hmm. Don't expect, and especially if you get, if they come, if they, um, you get a call back or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that's a real plus. Early on, don't expect to get anything. Just expect that you are letting people know that you are here. And they're discovering you. That's really what that is. Right. You know. Every so often, uh, they're looking for somebody who's absolutely fresh and new, etc. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, even that is not quite as. Um, that's not quite the truth that, mm -hmm. you know, is it's they they want to present. Presented as if it's somebody completely fresh and new, but they're not as fresh and new as you think. Right, you they've know? been working. So, yeah, yeah, like yeah. for a while. Like one of the things that uh, the, all the like the what is it? Uh, all the voice, the singing things. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. Pretty much every one of those yeah, people. I who noticed that. They, yeah. They actually they, have been doing it for God for knows for how long. Years, yeah. For years, you can't right. be that good in six weeks. You just right, can't. Right. You know. Right. That's another thing that makes people think, oh, I can just, yeah, I can it's learn. No, no, you can't. You just can't. <laughs> right. Like, one of the, like, the whole purpose of me putting this show together was because the acting business can be very, it can be very, uh, it, you know, um, it's depressing, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. because you have, you have stints where you work in, you book in back to back, and then you have your know, moments where it's like nothing. And... What I have decided is those times are times when the universe has said, you need to rest to prepare for what's coming next. It's not about worrying. Because okay. if, you if you've been doing the work that got you this far, mm -hmm. you're not going to stop working. Although I will acknowledge it took me a long time to, to actually believe that once this job is over, I am actually going to get another job. It took right. me a long time to get there. Right. But if you've, if, you've actually, if you've been working, if it's particularly if you've been working and s relatively successively, mm -hmm. and there's a lull of about a month or two, mm -hmm. don't sweat it. I, this is after I've been in business for, I don't know, 20 years. Mm -hmm. No, it was been in New York for like 10 years, 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I went from, I went like maybe four months, five months without anything. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the first job that came along was a Preparation H, which I did not want to do, but I had <laughs> not had, had any work, so I took it. Right. And then, <laughs> but mm -hmm. for the next four weeks after that, I got another commercial, plus soap operas they were here and voiceover and I had a TV series I was working on so mm -hmm. you know it was then that I went okay you need to relax just right. be, be okay right. but and and I got you know but um, if you feel like first off don't blame anybody else right. you're the one who's in control of your life right. that's the first thing right. secondly like I said do what you can to study, to learn more about yourself and your craft. Mm -hmm. uh, you are your you are your instrument. Right, right. It's got to be well well oiled, honed, shaped. Right. You know, so keep working at it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I thank you so much for being here. This was truly an honor. It's my pleasure, and I so enjoyed doing this. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps our show this evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, have a good evening. Thanks. Yeah, you, you kind of like look around <coughs> and okay. like do all okay. this. And like, because one thing actors do when they're nervous is like they never really have like one Focal point. Sure. Yep. And that's one guilty. Way. Right. <laughs> I've done that. One way, like you know, uh -huh. a casting director can tell all oh, they're nervous, or like even you know directors like oh they're nervous. You know what I mean? And it, it pulls you from the scene because you you're not focusing in on one point. Okay. So yep. Yes, we're making all the actor mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you should not do in a this. Oh, this is in other words, this is easy. 
I get, I, you get to do everything. Like you, you can be anybody when you're acting. Like you can't, you don't just have to pick one career because you can be anything in acting. You know, you can be a musician, you can be a singer, you could be whatever. And it's, it's just, I get to do all this stuff. Be all these like schizophrenic people. It's very cathartic for me because it keeps me out of mental hospitals. Right. <laughs> I want to be an actor because I want to affect lives. I want to give people an experience. I want them to feel some type of emotional connection to see something that they've never seen before. I sort of want to transform the way that they think because I feel like art connects us and through acting, you are able to just open somebody's mind. And by doing that, they can affect other people. They can change their life. They can help somebody else change their life. They could see a different point of view that they never saw before. And I think that is huge. That's huge. I love getting into roles that aren't me. Um, like I've played cops. I've played uh, mobster type, gangster type, mafia dudes. Uh, and when people meet me in person, they're like, really? You know, but uh, I've, I've gotten those roles. <laughs> and um, kind of like a Joe Pesci type thing going for me. Um, um, but I do, I love going into those roles because sometimes I say to myself, oh, can I do this? Can I, oh my God, can I really tap into this? But surprisingly, I'm able to do it, you know? And because uh, I, I tend to think that I'm really good at playing myself. And then I, I find that I, I'm actually, uh, I, I can actually target those roles that sometimes I find are really challenging. But once I put my mind to it, I'm, I, 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 I can nail it, so. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Leo gets. Okay, okay, okay. Leo gets. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, my favorite part of acting is when I uh, get my feedback from either the audience or my teachers or the director, because I keep, I want to get better, and I love when people uh, share their thoughts about my acting with me. Um, yeah, and it really gives me this power to keep going. But acting is just like you can just be anybody who you want to be. Um, so when people tell me, oh, you know, go get a real job, whatever the case may be, I can be like, well, I was a doctor last week. <laughs> I was a teacher the week before that. Uh, you know, so I, had, I did brain surgery when I was a doctor. <laughs> what did you do? I flew a car. I was an X-Men. You know, it's like all these other things. It's like, what, what can you say? You, you sit in a desk and you punch numbers and you daydream about living a, a, a life that I've lived. You just, you, you're just too afraid. And that's what's stopping a lot of people is fear. You know, for me, it's, I love it so much, I can't let fear stop me. But acting is something that just, it just to me so much. You have to be an artist to understand what it means. On the next. Hashtag Actors Life. We're reviewing some of the season's best and most memorable moments and never before seen footage. Don't miss it.